Thank you, Mehdi, and good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for having me today. It's a great pleasure uh, to be back in Paris for the third edition of API Days. So today, I'd like to share with you uh, some of the things that we've been building at Twitter for the past year. And six weeks ago today, at our Twitter Flight Conference, our very first developer event in San Francisco, we unveiled Fabric, a new modular mobile platform for developers. And I'm going to um, unveil to you guys today for the first time in Paris all the details about Fabric. So I'm going to talk to you some of the, about some of the lessons that we've learned along the way and how Fabric helps you connect with your users and how Fabric is the easiest way to build the best apps on both iOS and Android. So my name is Romain Met. I'm a developer advocate at Twitter and I'm working with the, our partners, but the broader uh, community of developers. So I essentially love working with people like you guys. And who in the room, just like to have a sense, I've already um, integrated APIs on mobile or just like maintains API that mobile developers consume? Like a lot of you guys, yeah, awesome. And for all of us passionate about APIs, we know the word has gone mobile, right? And these days, most likely, a lot of you, like me, consume APIs on mobile uh, apps, but also uh, it's interesting to notice that sometimes mobile is the reason why we create an API in the first place, because we want to have all this data accessible from iOS and Android. And the interesting thing is like Twitter was born mobile. From its launch eight years ago as an SMS-based product, we've always had mobile in our DNA. And as we've evolved our product uh, with the mobile ecosystem building our own apps, we realized that we encountered a lot of challenges along the way. Um, turns out, talking to our partners, they have the same challenges every single day, day in, day out. And it doesn't matter these days if you're building for iOS or building for Android. It doesn't matter if you're a student, a large company, or just a startup. The challenges are the exact same. So a year ago, when we started working on Fabric, we were like, how can we possibly tackle and solve uh, as many of those challenges as possible, not only for us, but for all of you guys in the broader developer community? So today, I'm going to focus on four of these challenges that you can see on the screen, stability, distribution, revenue, and identity. Because we truly believe by, by bringing together Crashlytics, Twitter, and Mopub, those three components, we can solve this issue not only for us, but for all of you. So let's dive in. When we started, the first thing we had in mind was around app stability. Because let's say you discover an app on the App Store. This one is called Cannonball. Uh, I built it for flight, and I'm going to talk to you a, a bit more uh, about it later. Let's say you discover this fun magnetic poetry game on the App Store. You start playing with it, and suddenly you tap a few words, and boom, you're back to the home screen. And that's not a great experience, and I'm sure all of you like me, I've experienced a lot of those crashes on mobile. And it turns out the stability is not only impacting those users because they're impacting your entire business. The App Store is filled of reviews of one or two stars, people complaining about issues. Turns out this is a real screenshot. Like a user wants to give negative stars just because the app is crashing. That's terrible if it happens to your business. So that's, that's exactly the challenge that Jeff Seibert and Wen Cheng, the two co-founders of Crashlytics, set out to solve in 2011. And they wanted to make sure the, stat like the status quo was horrible, and they wanted to make sure the developer experience would be, be way better than that. Like, if you're not an iOS developer, this is what's going on, even these days. I'm, uh, I took this crash from the iOS uh, Twitter app that we dog food internally, and Turns out there is a crash in there, but seriously, as a developer, what I, what I have to solve in there? OK, so Twitter is mentioned a few times on a few lines we can see, but seriously, those memory addresses, I have no clue what's going on. Wouldn't it be great if instead, as a developer, I would see the file name, the line number where the issue happened, but the full method and the params, because maybe it's an API request that's failing in some ways, and the version of your app, so you can see when you introduce the issue, but even better, instead of getting thousands of crashes report every single day, what if they were aggregated for you in issues so you can actually see what's, uh, what you have to fix and how many users are impacted by those uh, issues? So since we know how many users are impacted, we can go a step further and actually wrong those issues so you can have um, a priority list of uh, bug, uh, bugs to fix uh, first. 
So that's exactly what CrashDix does on mobile. One line of code in your iOS and Android app and you're good to go. You get all these insights. And we go even further because we uh, plot your stability over time. So you can say, um, let's say you introduce a new functionality or you integrate with new APIs into your mobile app. You can see how the app stability is going over time if you're not like regressing on some, in some ways. For developers, we also give a complete OS and device breakdown. So maybe an issue is only happening on a specific version of Android or maybe on a specific kind of network connectivity. You will get all these insights right from the ScratchDix dashboard. And of course, for developers, you need the full stack trace to understand what is really going on. So we uh, go ahead and highlight the line where we believe the bug happened. And we also collapse where, uh, when we believe um, those are irre irrelevant to the crash that happened. But of course, everything is accessible for you. And we've been blown away by the, the scale of crash leaks because in just the past months, we've received more than five and a half billion crashes. So we are really honored that so many of the top apps and so many indie developers rely on CrashLix every single day to make sure their apps is better for their users. But crashes are not the whole story when it comes to topping the charts in the App Store and Play Store. Because let's say you have an app that's stable, now it works pretty well, great. But you also want to make sure it works uh, great and, uh, from the UI perspective. It's responsive. The users understand the features that you're providing. So Beta by CrashLix tackles this equally important piece, uh, which is user feedback. And in May, we launched Beta, and it's basically a white label solution. Your users receive a beautiful email in their inbox. We put your icon in the spotlight. There is no account to create, no password to remember, just one tap to install. It doesn't have to be approved by Apple or uh, submitted to the Play Store. It's just like you're starting out, you're building your app, you just want testers to give you feedback. And Beta by CrashDig does just that. The UI automatically adopts your uh, color scheme of your icon, so it looks great no matter what your app icon looks like. There is absolutely no configuration to do. And we put as much care into the developer experience because we want you to know, as a mobile developers, who actually started to uh, accept your invite and actually started to play with your app to give you feedback. So you get all those insights right in the dashboard. And again, no App Store approval for all of these. You can just get uh, dozens of testers and, uh, and have some valuable feedback. We recently launched group support, so you can organize your testers into groups. Let's say your internal team, maybe some uh, core uh, users of your, of your community externally, so that's possible too. And we even announced share links, a way to share very easily without any email addresses to enter, a link to a build to your mobile iOS or Android app. So let's say you want to have a daily build uh, more or less stable, but not really for your internal team. You can do that. And maybe a more stable build on a weekly basis for, you, for your investors. You can do exactly that with, uh, with the share links. And of course, CrashDix and Beta work seamlessly together, which means that every time you ship new builds, you will get insights on any crashes that happen. So you can figure out whether or not an iOS app or Android app you're building is ready for prime time. If you have like less crashes happening, maybe you're almost there and ready to submit. So that's the latest on stability, the first uh, focus that we had for Fabric. And it allows you to really make sure your mobile apps are stable, to really delight your users and remove any crashes. We want you to win the, bar, uh, the war against the bugs. And we're committed to building the best solution for that with CrashEdix. And let's move on to another challenge. Let's say you have an app that's really well, that's really working well, it's not crashing, it's really stable now. The next battle is growth. How can you get more users into your app? And how can you keep them engaged so they can return and play with your app or enjoy your app on, the, on a weekly basis, for instance? What are the secrets to attract new users? We believe that the answer to that question is great content. If you can bring great content in a mobile app, your users will be delighted and use it even more. And they will be attracted. Wouldn't it be great if you could actually um, bring some real-time relevant conversation data right inside a mobile app? And wouldn't it be great if your users, every time they have a moment of joy using the app, what if they could just share those moments with their friends? 
every, sing every single day on the Twitter platform, we receive more than 500 uh, million tweets. And that's like a tremendous amount of uh, valuable data. And by tapping into Twitter, you can bring the pulse of the planet at your user's fingertips. Or at least now you can. Because the first, for the first time a few weeks ago, we unveiled the Twitter SDK for mobile, which allows you to render natively tweets uh, on iOS and Android. Previously, you had to uh, comply to a set of display requirements. It was really hard to build those views. Now it's time to relieve the burden from all of our uh, developers uh, in this room and, uh, and the broader community. So the problem is solved. Just a few lines of code and you're done. And speaking about APIs, it's really interesting because the Twitter REST API was introduced in 2007, and it's really the first API that I ever use myself. And even these days when I'm trying a new language, a new framework, or simply when I want to bring some valuable content into a mobile app, that's the, that's the first API I, I use. So the first thing we've done um, with the Twitter SDK is that we've made it so easy to use the Twitter API right from uh, mobile. So we take care of everything. The OAuth signature and Mehdi and the host uh, IO team could tell you how complex OAuth is. So we take care of all these things for, uh, for Twitter and we also uh, provide you with a set of convenience methods. And we know an SDK can be either bloated with many features you don't want to use or just lightweight and allow you to have this flexibility. So the REST API support that we have as part of the SDK does just that. So as you can see on the screen, an API client, you load a tweet with ID, we know that's going to be a common use case, and in just one line of code, you can render a tweet natively. Of course, it adapts automatically to the app color um, that you have, so maybe you want something a bit darker, that's possible too. Creating content is just as easy as bringing content into your app. So we introduced a new way uh, to compose and share uh, moments of joy from your users uh, to their Twitter followers. So the Tweet Composer, both for iOS and Android, is a way to seamlessly share content um, to Twitter. And the great thing about that is if you use Twitter cards on your website, every time a user is going to share something on Twitter, a, a button will appear for their followers so they can engage and install their app. So we believe that this closes the viral loop, and that's going to be super powerful for you uh, when you're building mobile apps. And of course, the Compose has to be powered by some sort of sign-in. So for the first time, we introduced a single sign-on on Twitter. So now in just a few lines of code again, you can use the button that we provide or you can build your own. It's just a matter of putting your handler on it. And you can just uh, sign in your users on both iOS and Android super easily. And for the first time ever, we also announced that as a developer, you can request the permission to access the user email address uh, so that has been uh, one of the biggest feedback we've received on signing with Twitter, so we're really happy to announce that too. And the last thing I wanted to touch on for you guys, API developers, uh, you might ask, well, do I really need to put this sign with Twitter button on every, uh, every time I want to bring some content on my mobile app? No, you do not. We don't want you to have like, we don't want your users to have a wide screen or immediately a sign in with Twitter button. What we did is we introduced a new way to authenticate with the Twitter API called GethOath. And using GethOath, you can actually collect, fetch, and display tweets without the need to ever uh, sign in as a user. So you can just use GethOath to uh, collect some tweets, as you can see, and just present them into a mobile app. So uh, we're really excited about that because we believe that the public real-time data that we provide is going to be super valuable for you guys building mobile apps. Right, so now you're driving growth, your users get engaged, you have an app that's stable, what's next? Well, how can you track how well you're doing? Like, how can you track whether or not your work you're doing is paying off? We believe the solution for that is Answers. Answers is a lightweight, zero-config mobile analytics tool that we launched uh, in July. And we've been astounded by its growth. In just the past 30 days, we've received more than 2 trillion app lifecycle events coming from Answers. So, why is Answers and why developers love Answers so much? Well, the, re the reason for that is pretty easy. It's because unlike any analytics tools that we've seen in the past, 
answers is entirely real time and at a glance, which means you won't go into drop down filters to actually access the data that you need. It's one page, one dashboard, and you can see how well your business is doing. You have all the best metrics that you need, the daily, monthly active users, uh, the length of the sessions your, user, your users are doing. On top of the screen, we're actually drawing in real time how many people are using your app right now. And obviously, we made possible for uh, answers to be bound to Crashlytics in a very like, uh, smart way so that every time your app stability is impacted, we can send you a, a heads up in advance. How we, do we do that? The reason is every time a new data point comes into answers, we monitor all those data points and we calculate the deviation and we project that forward. So we can send you a heads up when the stability or something wrong is going with your app. So you can actually have a warning before you hit rock bottom, as you can see here on the screen. And then as a developer, you need more to actually see what's going on. So we give you the full stack trace of what's going on here. You can see uh, one, more than 1% of your users are impacted by that crash, so you better fix that right away. And the best part of answers, you don't actually need to log in on the dashboard, because every single morning, you're going to receive an email in your inbox with a complete TLDR telling you how well your business is doing. So, Every time you have like a, a new uh, great metric or a warning we want you, uh, you to be aware of, you're going to receive that in your inbox uh, every single day. So that's super convenient. Right, so that's distribution. So we believe that if you can build a great mobile app that's stable, gathering user feedback, you're bringing users, you keep them engaged, you're halfway there. The next battle, and the other half is revenue. So I'm just going to touch a few minutes on revenue and what we provide for that. As a developer, I was quite new to the ad industry, to be honest, uh, a year ago. But as I got to know Mopub, their team and their partners and their developer tools, I was really fascinated by what they created. Mopub work in three different ways. So let's say you're big enough or lucky enough to work with Coke or Pepsi. Mopub can track and serve those ads right away for you for free inside the dashboard. But maybe you want to work with more uh, networks like iAd, AdMob, or maybe the Facebook ad network that they recently launched. Ne Mopub provides something called the network mediation. So just by using the Mopub SDK, you can actually tap onto all those networks, and Mopub will help you monetize the most effectively by getting um, the most revenue for you for every single uh, request. And in addition, all the requests are going to the Mopub marketplace where thousands of advertisers are bidding in real time on the opportunity to be in your app. So every single time, we want you to make the, the most revenue out of, uh, out of Mopub. And their scale is immense. They've uh, served in the past 30 days 170 billion ads, which is roughly one ad per person on Earth every single day, which is absolutely fascinating. And for developers, the reason why Mopub is so uh, successful is because it gives you the whole control um, in terms of displaying ads. You can use banner ads like this one, like Flow Free, works well. Maybe you want to have something like full screen between two levels of your game, you can do that. Maybe you want to have some promoted content at some point using a video, you can too. Or maybe you've been inspired by the way Twitter approaches promoted content, like in a timeline or a stream of, of data, you can put native ads right in place, and you can control exactly the way they're going to be displayed. Even better for native ads, Mopub recently launched new controls, which allow you to control how many ads or the balance and the position of these ads uh, are going to be in your app. So no code to change, no uh, app store approval. You can tweak the balance between content and ads right from the Mopub dashboard, and Mopub talks to their API under the hood to present the right amount uh, of ads to the users. So that's revenue. We've covered stability, we've covered distribution, and now revenue. And we think that if you nail those three, you're in really great shape. You're building a great mo uh, mobile business. There is one more developer problem that I want to touch on this morning. And maybe all of you or some of you think that's already been solved in the past, but the data tends to disagree. And that's identity login. So all of us, and all of you, of course, you have, when you create a new product, some sort of an identity system, whether it's for like gathering data on your users, saving their account, or just like enabling them to use many devices. 
And for the past two decades or more, the solution has been around email and password, right? So it's great in the sense that it puts the users in control of the data they want to share, but there are a lot of severe shortcomings. For instance, they're easy to fake. You're not really sure who's behind the screen trying to log in. But nobody remembers passwords. We all forget our password passwords all the time, so you even have to build a forgot password infrastructure to even have a business. And even better, uh, and even bigger of a problem, sorry, in a lot of developing countries, people don't even use email anymore. So if that's the way you want your users to sign in, maybe you're missing out on a lot of users. So lately, the trend has been around social login. The promise is to say, I'm going to sign up for this new service, use my well-known account somewhere else, and that's going to be easy. Well, the problem of that is like, as we were working on our own sign-in with Twitter and talking to our partners, we realized that for, uh, for a majority of them, the sign-ups are no longer coming from social login, and that number is increasing. And we believe that the reason for that is because users online are increasingly aware of the persona they want to be and the data they share. Maybe when you sign up for a new, for a new work application, maybe it's not great to uh, you know, bring all your family photos in there. So we wanted to build something better than that while putting the users back in control, but something better than email, using an ID that everybody on Earth had, the phone number. So we launched a product called Digits. And as I mentioned, Twitter started on mobile. So we've built an, a fascinating and super robust SMS infrastructure. In fact, we are among the largest uh, senders of SMS on Earth today. So with Digits, we are sharing this infrastructure with all of you guys. So how does it work? Well, Digits is a white label solution. It's phone number sign up, don't write. So let's take a look. We provide a button, you can use your own. That's uh, fist, fit style, so they decided to use their own. The user tap their button, the button. What's happening is they type their phone number, they can select their country code, they hit the blue button. We automatically take care of all the flow. We send an SMS code, the user taps the code, and that's it, they're logged in. So for developers, it's a breeze. In just a few lines of code, what you get, essentially, is the verified phone number of that user and um, a stable user ID that you can store however you wish uh, in your databases and backend. As I mentioned, it's white label, so if you want to have like, something a bit twittery with blue, you can do that, but maybe you want something like with different colors, you can do exactly what you want and we get out of the way. And with higher signing rates, thanks to no password and reduce spam thanks to phone verification, we believe that Digits is a way better solution compared to email and password. And we, not only, we didn't launch Digits only for iOS and Android. We also launched Digits for the web because we want you guys to build entire businesses on top of Digits. So we are currently working on the JavaScript SDK for the web and um, it's really just the start for us. But since day one, we already support 216 countries and 28 languages, and it's entirely free. So we're just getting started with digits, but we really, really, we're really excited about it, and we want you guys to try it out. Um, we have a lot of uh, f thinking on digits and where, uh, and how ma like many more challenges we want uh, to help you on. For instance, friends matching APIs and all these things using the address book. So that's in the plan too, and that's identity. So today we covered seven different SDKs, and honestly, if you want to use them, like install them separately and configure them, good luck. No, just kidding. So we could have done something different, which was uh, putting together thousands of pages of bedtime reading for you guys. We considered it, but no, seriously. Um, we, have to we had to do something better. So we believe the solution is Fabric, and with Fabric, we want you to just install SDK without ever leaving your ID, like without ever reading any wiki pages. Yeah. So um, we wanted Fabric to be lightweight, so it's not bloated with features. You only pick and choose the features that make sense and that you want to use in your, uh, in your app. And it has to be streamlined, not to disrupt your workflow. So what we've done instead is like we've tied the SDKs together where it makes sense, or maybe by shared code, or where we believe you're going to use the features together. Uh, we call them kits. So we have the Crashlytics kit, 
the Twitter kit and the Mopap kit. Digit is part of the Twitter kit. And Crashlytics is free, Digit is free, as I mentioned, the Twitter kit is free, and Mopap is even better, it's free plus, because you can even make money out of Mopap if you start displaying ads in your mobile apps. And the onboarding for Fabric is remarkable. Just, we built plugin for Xcode, IntelliJ, Android Studio, and Eclipse. So in just a few taps, you can install the plugins. You don't even have to create API keys anymore. We take care of all the flow. In Xcode, we replaced the complex uh, setup with a simple drag and drop. Android, we went further, and we actually passed your Android source code to just put in place um, the, 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 the code to add the features that are missing. So for Flight, we built this app called Cannonball. So I took care uh, of the Swift uh, iOS app myself. And I was pretty new to mobile, to be honest. And it was a d delightful experience to work with Fabric. We also worked on the Android version. So you can find them all. And the code is entirely open source. And I'm just going to do a quick demo now uh, before uh, wrapping up. I'm just going to set up my raw display here. All right. I don't know if you guys can see properly. The screen is a bit, oh, let me quickly change the resolution for that. That should be better. Yep, all right. So just to, let, to show you quickly, that's the Fabric SDK, the Fabric plugin. And you can see all the kits are already installed. I'm just going to do a quick um, demo of how you can add Fabric to your app. So we made it super simple with Fabric.with. You can just pass the kits to initialize them all. So we are going to put Twitter, Crashlytics, and Mopub in there. Oops, Mopub. That's all you have to do to integrate with Fabric. Oh, Xcode is having a little issue. But it's going to come, hopefully. So that's, that's all it takes. And, um, and finally, the, the thing you have to do for digits is super simple. For digits, all you have to do, uh, I'm going to actu actually uh, do it here. We have a button, um, and we're going to put a handler on it. So digit shared, insta shared instance, authenticate with completion. So you have a session. And just in case, we have an error. And what we're going to have here is a session. And if the session exists, then what you get as a developer is the verified phone number of that user. So you can do session.phone number and you have everything you need. All right. Just going to build that and do a quick demo for you guys. So I was hoping to do a fabric uh, to digits demo, but the challenge in this room underground is the network is not so great. So that's, uh, that's Cannonball. Now, if you tap on that button, I can select my country code. And I can type my phone number. And I will try to send the code. And my code should arrive in a few seconds, hopefully. Yes. If I tap on it, 492263. Boom, I'm logged in. So that. that Thank you. So that, that's all it takes for you guys as developers to code, and that's all it takes for users to sign up with their phone number on mobile, which is really fascinating. So I encourage you to check out uh, Cannonball. Like, we have all the features in there, like Mopub native ads. Some of them are even f coming from the Facebook ad network right away. Um, API request in there uh, to share your uh, poems on Twitter. I can actually share one quickly. This one looks good. Let's say we're sharing from stage. That's going to be cool. Sharing a poem from stage at hashtag API days. All right. Let's try to tweet that. Boom. Tweeted. Awesome. And for those of you guys who were here last year, I brought something back. And for all of you guys who are new, you will discover the demo. So last year, I had a quick demo with the streaming API on Twitter, which enables you to make a drone takeoff from tweets sent by the audience. So I brought the drone again this year. Here it is, with new, actually, uh, new blue and Twittery customization on it. And what I was thinking is, like, what if instead of composing a tweet with all the commands, 
what if instead I could build a simple fabric app in just a few lines of code that would automatically collect tweets and create tweets for me with the commands. So that's exactly what I did, and let's take a look. So I'm going to build and run this app. Oh, the simulator is in use. Let's kill it first. Right. Right. Compiling. There we go. So I built this tiny app called Flight Drone. And that's the drone I had at Twitter Flight. Let's skip the login for now. So what we have here is a way to interact um, with the drone. But instead, I made um, a little something so you can tap the commands in, like, and compose the tweet automatically. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the drone, let's say, take off. That's great. We're going to make it move up, rotate right, uh, do a little flip on the left, and then land. That looks good. So the one last thing I need to do is to launch the Node.js server here that will actually monitor the Twitter API in real time to see when I tweet. And of course, I also need to be connected to the drone, which emits its own Wi-Fi. And it should be online in a few seconds. There we are. Cool. Perfect. So as soon as I launch this, um, this drone program, we should see here on the screen the actual camera of you guys. Perfect. And I'm going to tweet this tweet. So yep, it looks good. Let's take a look. Tweet that. All right, so it's going to rotate on the right. It should do a flip on the left. And there we go. <laughs> so the, treat, the, the drone actually replies to treat in real time. So if you guys mention API days on takeoff, it might actually take off again. Um, I don't know if it's a great idea, but you can, you can try. <laughs> All right, so let's turn off my raw display to wrap up. Awesome. And boom. Cool. So that's all I had for you guys today. I encourage you to sign up for Fabric on fabric.io. We've seen such a huge demand that we're still ramping up and inviting users. But if you sign up today, I will make sure all of you get an invite this week. All right? Oh, somebody played with the drone again. <laughs> And speaking about drones, I'll be uh, this afternoon at the Speed Hack upstairs, and they will have a fabric challenge and drones to win. Right. So if you want to dr win a drone and play with fabric this afternoon, I'll be upstairs, and I can answer any of your questions you might have. And thank you very much. I <laughs> thank you. I, I can't wait to see all the great things you're going to build with fabric. Thank you. Yeah.